Hello, I'm Christopher Staples, and I'm going to tell you about how you can use the ThingSpeak integration to the Things stack to store your device data. More importantly, I'm going to show you why you want to get that data into ThingSpeak. My example today is based on collection of agricultural data that often needs long-range transmission in areas that lack Wi-Fi connectivity. This demonstration involves a custom device that sends position, temperature, and soil moisture data over a LoRa network in Natick, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. I'll show you key steps in the setup for this project. First, here are the top four reasons to use ThingSpeak with your ThingStack data. The number one most important reason to use ThingSpeak is ThingSpeak has MATLAB built in. You can use the same professional code used by engineers and scientists worldwide. You probably have even used it at your own work or school, or both. After I show you how to get the integration set up, I'll show some interesting things that you can do with your data in MATLAB. Number two, we keep your data. Generally, even for our free users, we keep up to 10 million messages, and for paid users, 100 million messages per unit. This means you can go back and see what happened when you tweaked those parameters in your IoT system, and then compare. Number three, you can get started for free for non-commercial work, or start a free trial for commercial work. Number four, ThingSpeak is easy. We spend a lot of time thinking about how to make things easy for the user, and then we document it. MathWorks documentation is even a little bit famous. You won't have to guess how the functions work. ThingSpeak is so easy, you can get going in just a few minutes to set up a channel and start recording your IoT data. Let's start on ThingSpeak. The first thing you'll need is a MathWorks account. You can do that even from ThingSpeak. Use the Create One link on the sign-in page. Now we need a channel. ThingSpeak keeps your data in channels, where a channel is pretty much the same thing as a device. In ThingSpeak, from the Channels tab, click New Channel and fill in the details, the name, description, and be sure to enable all the fields you plan to use. Once you make your channel, write down the channel ID, we're in the millions, and click the API Keys tab. The Write API key lets you write data to the ThingSpeak. Copy it and save it, or memorize it. Now let's talk about the new Things stack. I think it's pretty great, and I hope you do too. There are many ways to set up your devices at the Things stack. Here's one example. I want to set up a device that sends data to ThingSpeak. In my account at the stack site, I'll log in and create a new application. Click on the Application button on the Applications tab, and fill out the info, and you have a new app. The Things stack gets the data from your device and decides what to do with it. Since we want to integrate with ThingSpeak, we need to build a ThingSpeak integration. Click Integrations, choose Webhooks, and then Add Webhook. Choose ThingSpeak from the group of tiles for available integrations. Now you get to fill in the info you chose earlier. Add the channel ID and the right API key that you copied down for your channel. Click this button to create the webhook. Now we need to format the data from your device to get into ThingSpeak. This is the JSON format expected by the ThingSpeak server, which I copied from the documentation. The bytes coming in from your device need to be reformatted into this format when they are sent to ThingSpeak. Choose Payload Formatter and select your favorite type of code. I used JavaScript here. I used my known output format of the bytes from my device to build the expected ThingSpeak format. If you have a standard format device like Cayenne, you can use the published format for that device message structure and change it into the ThingSpeak format, like I do here in this code. The final step is to add a device and get the network session key, device address, and app session key. Depending on your connection method, you may need to give these to your device. Now your data is streaming into ThingSpeak, like this traffic data, which has been sped up by a factor of 60. So now we've connected the data from the Thing stack, and it's coming into ThingSpeak. We can use the power of MATLAB to analyze and visualize the data from our Things network device. Let's see what we can do with that data in ThingSpeak. We'll start by making some interesting data visualizations. Your data coming into ThingSpeak is already plotted in these automatic field charts but you can also create something more special, like this geoplot showing the temperature and soil moisture related to GPS location. You can do this in the MATLAB Visualizations app.
First, create a new script. In the code, start by reading the data from your channel. In this example, I've got data from two air quality sensors that I want to compare, so I'll read them both. Then I'll use the hold command to plot them on the same chart. Now I can calibrate one versus the other or see if they deviate. When you don't need a visualization, you can use the MATLAB analysis app. You can write MATLAB code in this window to read and operate on your data. Here's a typical example. Once again, let's read the channel data. MATLAB has a lot of built-in functions to manipulate the data, but we'll do something simple like calculate an average. Then we write it back to a new channel, which we'll call the derived channel. ThingSpeak also has a built-in email alert service. You can write code that alerts you if the average that we just calculated was over a set threshold. There is a built-in template that you can copy to make alerts, or you can use the documentation on send alert. But here's one of the best features of ThingSpeak. I need this code to check my device data every day because I can't, I don't have the time to check my ThingSpeak channels every day. Code scheduling on ThingSpeak will help keep your IoT data in line when you can't check it. The Time Control app allows you to call an analysis script up to every five minutes or whenever data is inserted into a channel. You can also use the React app to simplify things. React allows you to specify a channel and then a threshold trigger instead of writing it into your custom code. Now, here's a few more interesting analysis examples. In this example, you can set your code to check for outliers and automatically remove them from your data. Here's another example where you can perform regression to continuously fit your live data and then write the result to a new channel. This channel uses the live temperature data from our weather station in the parking garage to predict when crops planted at a certain date will be ready to harvest. This example is for corn planted in April and updates every day based on the new web temperature data. And finally, here's a neural network tide forecasting machine learning model to improve the quality of local tide data in a muddy bay near the Boston shore, keep the boats from getting stuck. If you have questions about ThingSpeak, we have an active community with discussions and answers to ThingSpeak issues. You can purchase a license for commercial use or access to advanced features, including a faster update rate for your channels. To discuss commercial applications, you can reach out to support at thingspeak.com email. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you success with your IoT project.